in the last lecture uh, we have seen the semantics of uh, propositional logic where we introduced a very simplistic method that is called as truth table method. So today what we are going to see is we'll, we are going to study this truth functional connectives that is not and R implies and double implies in greater detail and then once we construct the truth table we can uh, come to know many things such as when two groups of statements in proposition logic are said to be consistent, when a conclusion follows from the premises that means validity takes care of that particular thing and when uh, a particular uh, formula given well formed formula is a valid formula or when a given propositional formula is a tautology contradiction or contingent sentence all these things one can come to know with uh, this particular decision procedure method which is called as truth table method. So this is a decision procedure method because uh, given a well formed formula we can check whether that particular given well formed formula is a valid formula contingent formula tautologies etc and all. So this is the most simplistic method with which we begin with and then we will move on to some other kind of decision procedure methods such as semantic tablux method, resolution refutation method if time permits we will go into the details of it uh, in the next forthcoming lectures and then there are other methods such as given a well formed formula one can reduce the formula into conjunctive and disjunctive normal forms and then one can talk about whether that particular given formula is a, a tautology or not. So once we find out that a particular formula is a tautology then we can say that it is a valid formula. So logicians task is to identify what are the tautologies and all because all tautologies in propositional logics propositional logic are obviously valid formulas and all. So to begin with in this lecture what we will be doing is we will be talking about some of the basic definitions such as consistency, validity, logical consequence, when two formulas are logically equivalent to each other etc using truth table method. So before that we have defined a truth functional connective in this sense a truth functional connective is a one in which uh, the truth value of a compound sentence is solely determined by the truth value of its individual constituents. Suppose if you want to determine the truth value of P or Q, so the truth value of P or Q the compound sentence is solely determined by whatever values P, Q etc the propositional variables takes in that given well formed formula. So there is a no other thing which comes into picture in determining the truth value of that particular formula P or Q. But in day to day practice we need to go beyond this truth functional connectives and all then we need to talk about some other things such as for example one example we already studied in some detail so that is I went to uh, I became sick and I went to the doctor and the second one is I went to the doctor and I became sick and I became sick these two uh, uh, statements are totally different one is uh, there is a temporal order present in this particular kind of thing this example. So went to the doctor and then followed by that uh, I mean you became sick that is uh, that is what is following in the second statement in the first statement you became sick and that is why you went to the doctor and all this these two statements mean two different things and all. So if the truth value of a compound statement or sentence is not solely determined by the truth value of its individual constituents then the usage of the truth functional connective uh, we call it as non truth functional usage of that particular kind of connective, connective. So there are many non truth functional uh, connectives which we come across not in this course but uh, in advanced courses in logic especially in modal logic etc and all there are some operators which are considered to be intentional. If the truth value of a compound statement is solely determined by the truth value of its constituents then the truth functional connective is considered to be extensional. If it is not determined solely by its individual constituents then it is called as intentional. So there are many operators such as I believe that P uh, I uh, for example it is possible that P it is necessary that P etc all these things are uh, some of them are considered to be modal operators which are considered to be intentional. So the truth value of I believe that P is not solely determined by whatever value P takes in all. There are many things which I believe them to be true but it may not be actually true you know. I believe that God exists to be true but actually 
we do not know whether God exists or not and all. It may be the case that God exists, it may not be may the case that God does not exist and all. So, I believe that uh, there are so many things that ghost exist and all. That may be true to someone or maybe others it may be false and all. So, the truth value of a of that particular kind of statement is not solely determined by whatever value that the individual components takes and all. In that sense it is intentional which is beyond the scope of our study. So, we will be studying about only extensional operations operators such as not implies and or etcetera and all. These are called as truth functional connectives. So, this is the one which we came up with. Uh, the negation is the simplistic one when the proposition is true then the negation of p is obviously false when p is false obviously not p is true and all it is raining that means the opposite of that one is it is not raining. So, in the same way uh, you can define other connectives in this way uh, I do not want to go into the details of all these things which we studied earlier uh, the uh, first to begin with the conjunction conjunction becomes true only when both the constituents are true whereas uh, in all other cases it is going to be false and all. Disjunction on the other hand it can be used in two different senses and all the one which is shown in the red is used for exclusive or the one which is used in the black color is meant for uh, inclusive or. In the case of inclusive or P or Q that is a disjunction it can be also called as a disjunction or you can call it as either P or Q etcetera and all etcetera. Uh, that is going to be false only when both are both constituents are false in all other cases it is going to be true. In the case of conditional a uh, little bit a uh, little bit tricky. So, a conditional will become false only when when the antecedent that is p is true and the consequent q here is false that means when p is t q is false then p in plus q is false in all other cases it is going to be true. So, this is quite difficult for us to accept, but it works for mathematical reasoning especially when the antecedent is false the consequent is false then also uh, the conditional is going to be true and all. For example, if I say if Taj Mahal is in Andhra Pradesh uh, then uh, Uttar Pradesh is in Uttar Pradesh is in Pakistan for example, if you say that thing both uh, both statements are false. So, even then in that case the conditional total conditional the truth value of the conditional is going to be true and all because both p and q are false. So, that is what is the semantics of uh, material implication. So, it works perfectly all right for uh, mathematical reasoning for example, simple examples can be 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and then 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So, in this case the condition is going to be true if 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 then 3 plus 2 is equal to 6 if you say that thing both p and q are false, but yet the condition is going to be true. So, this is what we mean by uh, material implication it is defined simply as p in plus q is nothing but not p or q and the by implication which is def, uh, especially used for invoking necessary and sufficient conditions or it can invoke um, some kind of equivalence relation. So, that is simply like this. So, when both uh, when p is t q is false the conditional p if and only if q is false or if p is false q is for q is true then p imply if and only if q is false in all other cases it is going to be true. So, this is what how we define uh, the connectives and all this is the way the uh, connectives behaves you know behaves. So, what are we going to do with this truth tables? So, in what way it's they are going to be useful to us? So, truth tables are used especially to determine first whether the proposition is a logical truth or a logical falsehood that means it is a tautology or a contradiction. So, we will look into some examples and show that when a given formula with simple examples we show that a given formula is a tautology and given formula is a contradiction you know, contradiction. And it can also be used to determine whether a set of sentences are satisfiable that is whether the sentences can be simultaneously true or not that that is also we can determine with the help of truth table. We can also determine whether two propositions are logically equivalent to each other for example, if you say p in plus q it is logically equivalent to not p or q. So, how do we know that these two are logically equivalent equivalent. So, there is a decision procedure method with which you can you can say that 
these two are logically identical that is what we are trying to do in the next few minutes. Using truth table we can find out when two given formulas are logically equivalent to each other. We can also determine whether one proposition follows from another after all logic is all about what follows from what. So that is validity is a concept which takes care of what follows from what. So usually the conclusion follows from the premises. So that means we can also determine the validity of a given argument using truth table method. So we will consider a few examples and then see how we can determine whether to begin with first we will talk about whether a given logical formula a well formed formula is a tautology contradiction or contingent kind of statement. So let us consider some examples for proving there are three kinds of statements which exist in propositional logic. So they are tautologies one the formulas which are obviously true always true and there are some other formulas which are called as contradictions and there are some formulas which are sometimes true and sometimes false and all which are considered under the category of contingent statement. The first foremost thing which we need to do is to identify what kind of uh, uh, formula it is whether it is a tautology or it is a contradiction or is it a contingent kind of statement. So let us consider some example suppose if you have a formula like this. So now we want to check whether this particular kind of formula is a tautology or a contradiction or contingent statement using truth table method. So now there are two variables here P and Q so that is why 2 to the power of n possibilities entries will be possible in a truth table that means four entries are possible in a given truth table. So now what we need to do here is this thing. So this is considered to be a minor logical connective because it connects only two variables. Now this is considered to be a major logical connective. So, so under the main logical connective the idea is this that under the once you identify the major logical connective under this main logical connective if you get only T's etc and all it is all T's only then it is called as tautology the formula which is always true whatever values you assign to P and Q is always going to be true and all if that is the case it is a tautology and if you have only F's and all under the main logical connective then it is a contradiction and in the truth table under the main logical connective you have T is F or T F etc 1 T 1 F or 1 T all F's and all then also it is called as contingent and all contingent kind of formula and all. So now how to check whether the given formula that we have taken is a tautology or not. So for this we need to construct the truth table so for this you know you have to the variables that you need to write P and Q so these are the only two variables that we have and then the first one which you have to take into consideration is this one because it is a sub formula of the main formula Q implies P is the one which you take into consideration and then you write truth table for this one. So, so now P is Q's can take only these values. Uh, t t f f t f t f so there is a way of writing this particular kind of thing suppose if you have three variables so what you will do here is this thing. t t t because three variables are there 2 to the power of three entries are possible that means rows which are possible in a given truth table that means eight entries are possible first you write all t's four t's and all followed by that 4 f's so this is what you do and then second one what you do is tt ff 2 t's and 2 f's uh, 2 t's 2 f's and all and then 
once again. 2 t's and f n. So, this is enough 4 variables are there. So, now once you write uh, first 4 t's 4 f's and 2 t's 2 f's 2 t's 2 f's and then you write alternative t f t f t f and t f and all. So, this is going to take care of all the possibilities that uh, you can talk about in a given formula. These are the only values that p's q's r's can take care of. For example, in the first case p q r etcetera takes only t's and all. In the second case p takes value t q takes value t and r takes value f. So, like this you can fill the truth table and all, but the problem here is is that once the number of variables increases for example, if you have n is equal to 5 then you have 2 to the power of 5 entries which are possible that is 32 entries you need to inspect to find out a given formula is a tautology or contradiction or contingent. So, it is little bit difficult you know that is why we move on to some other kinds of methods which uh, we can call it as indirect truth table method or there may be some other methods uh, uh, there are some other methods which we will we will talk about in the next few classes. So, they are all decision procedure methods, but now coming back to this problem. So, first we need to consider q implies p this is a sub formula. So, now this formula is going to be false only in this case in all other cases it becomes uh, t and all. So, why because of this particular kind of thing this is p and q p implies q this is defined as p or q t t f f t f f. So, now this formula is going to be false only in this case in all other cases it is going to be true. So, that is the way we define the semantics you know, of p implies q. So, this is the uh, truth table of this one q implies p. So, what we are trying to do simply is this that given a well formed formula we are trying to construct a truth table method. Truth table method is a very good construct constructive kind of method it is very easy to use especially when the number of variables are less than 4 and all. If it is more than 4 things will become very difficult it is it is it occupies the entire board and all. So, we will follow some other methods and all. So, now p implies q implies p now you need to look at these two rows and all you have to inspect a row in which uh, p is t and q implies p is false and all. So, there is no row uh, these are all rows and all there is no row in which p is t and the q implies t is false and all of course, this is p is false q implies p is false obviously it is false and all. So, there is no row in which p is t and q implies p is false and all because that makes the whole conditional q implies p false and all. So, we do not have this particular kind of row. So, that means all these things are true. So, now what we got here is simply this thing uh, under the main logical connective this is the main logical connective we got all t's in all. So, that makes this particular kind of formula a tautology. So, what happens if you put some kind of uh, if you change it into some other kind of thing. Let us say this is p implies not q implies p. So, now what you need to do here is we need to draw some extra column and all. So, that is not q. So, now observe this q. So, whenever it is t it becomes f whenever it is f it becomes uh, it becomes t whenever it is t it becomes f and whenever it becomes f it becomes t that is the semantics of negation and all. So, what we have done we have changed this formula into some other thing and all when we are trying to see whether it is a tautology contradiction or contingent formula there are very simple things to do once you construct the truth table what you need to do is under the main logical connective you need to inspect whether a given formula is uh, I mean it or you always get trees in all the rows of your truth table. So, now we need to consider not q implies p. So, now the truth table changes and all that is why I rubbed it. So, now not q implies p 
you have to take into consideration this one you have to move from this to this. So this becomes false only when uh, not Q is T and then T is false in all in all other cases it becomes T. So that is the way we define the semantics and all. So now we need to consider P implies not Q implies P. So that means you need to consider this particular kind of rows these two rows which you need to consider. Is there any row in which uh, you have uh, P T and not Q implies P T and all uh, not, not Q implies P false and all again in this case there is no row these are all the rows and all you have to inspect each and every row here is there any row in which you have antecedent this is the antecedent and this is whole thing is a consequent is there any row in which this particular thing is T and the right hand side that is not Q plus P is false and all in this row this is not the case both are T's it is ruled out even in this case also it is T in this case also it is going to be T and in all the cases it becomes T. So P implies not Q is also going to be uh, a tautology and all it is simply straightforward and all so this is usually an axiom in uh, Hilbert Ackerman axiomatic system which we are going to talk about it little bit later suppose if you treat this particular thing is a, as an axiom whatever you substitute into this one that is you know uniformly substitute into this one is also going to be a, going to be true and all for example here in this case not Q is substituted for Q and all so this is also going to be true and all suppose if you substitute not P for P and all so then this formula becomes not P implies not Q implies not P this is also going to be a theorem and all theorem is a one which is obviously true and all so uniform substitution we can retain the tautology hood and all tautology hood so it is in this sense we just replace Q by not Q uniformly and it retained its tautology so this is what we are going to talk about a little bit later when once we study this axiomatic systems and all. so this is also an example of a tautology so let us consider some more examples and see whether uh, a given formula is a tautology or contradiction or a contingent kind of state suppose if you have a formula p and not p obviously this is a contradiction you are saying that it is raining and it is not raining so obviously it is a contradiction let us construct a truth table there is only one uh, variable here propositional variable that is p only so that means it has only two entries in the truth table so once it is the case p and not p the only values that it can take is p can take value t or p can take value f and all and the corresponding negation is if p is t obviously it is f and if it is f then it is t so now you take p and not p so uh, it is like uh, 1 into 0 that is 0 that means f only even in this case also it becomes f so under the main logical connective we got only f's that means this is considered to be a contradiction now let us consider some examples for contingent kind of statements so you can take other examples also p or q implies let us say not p. some formula whatever has come to my mind I have written here p or q implies not p so now what you need to do here is first you write P and Q these are the two variables that exist in this formula then you write P or Q and here the main logical connective is this particular kind of thing while studying the syntax we found out uh, we found what is going to be the major logical connective and what is going to be the minor logical connective a major logical connective is a one which connects as many propositional variables as possible and all that means this is the major logical connective because it connects 1 2 3 
variables and all. So that is why it is called as the major logical connective and whatever logical connective that occurs in the sub formula is considered to be the minor logical connective. So you have P R Q and the next one you are going to write is this one you have to consider not P also. So this is the one which we need to brackets needs to be written clearly. Now we are trying to find out whether this is a tautology or contradiction or a contingent statement. So now first we write uh, this thing you have two variables you write just like this T T F F alternative T's and alternative F's two T's and two F's and here alternative T and alternative F and P R Q is going to be false only in this case in all other cases it becomes true and then you need to fill this not P and all not me so if this becomes T it becomes false and this becomes false and T and T. So now we need to look into this particular kind of thing the arrow is important and all we should not move from not P implies P or Q this is a totally different formula P or Q implies not P is different from not P implies P or Q it is never the one and one and the same you know, unless or until they are logically identical to each other uh, if the by implication is there then you can go you can move in both directions you know, directions. So P or Q implies not P so now you have to find out a row in which uh, uh, you have this has T and then this has F then the whole conditional will become false you know. so now this is T and this is F this becomes false again P or Q and not P again this is a this is false now in this case both are T so that means it is T so now P or Q is F and then this is T and by the semantics of uh, conditional when whenever the antecedent is false the consequent is true the whole conditional is obviously going to be T n what is that we got is simply this thing. So now in the final column of your truth table you have two F's and then two T's and all. if it had been the case that all oh, if you had got all F's and all then it is considered to be a contradiction which you did not get it in the same way if you had got all T's and all under the main logical connective implication then it is considered to be a tautology which is not the case here so then that means it is considered to be a contingent kind of statement. So using truth table you can classify the statements of propositional logic into tautology contradictions and contingent this truth table method works perfectly fine especially when the number of variables are limited to 3 or 4 and all of course it works for many number of variables but it is very difficult for us to construct uh, the truth table especially when n is greater than 5 because if n is greater than 5 for example 6 variables are there then you have 2 to the power of 6 entries that means 32 entries which you need to inspect maybe 64 I think 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. So this is 8 8 into 8 64 entries will be there it becomes difficult for a human being to uh, see all these things and all perhaps it is easy um, but a computer can easily uh, do this particular kind of thing. So whatever is very difficult for us maybe the computer can easily calculate things. So truth table can still be used as uh, one of the important methods for judging whether a given formula is a tautology contradiction and contingent why are we doing all these things simply because we are trying to extract tautologies and all from a given for well formed formulas. So we started with well formed formulas and out of this well formed formulas some are considered to be valid formulas means which are obviously tautologies some are contradictions which are obviously invalid and some are considered to be contingent kind of formulas. If you can extract tautologies and all then what we, we can have is all valid formulas because all tautologies are obviously valid formulas that is the reason why uh, uh, we are insisting on tautologies in particular. So using truth table one can talk about uh, uh, whether a given well formed formula is a tautology contradiction or a contingent state. 
So now the second thing which you can do is this particular kind of thing. You can also determine whether a given set of sentences are satisfiable or not. So that means uh, let us consider some simple example and we will see whether it is considered to be satisfiable or not. Now you have come across you have translated the English language sentences and then you came across this particular kind of thing P or Q the first sentence uh, Q implies uh, something like not P now. So now satisfiability means once you assign truth values to P's and Q's ultimately these two should be simultaneously true and all if this two becomes false and all false especially then it is called as unsatisfiability and all. So how do we know by using truth table method these are the some of the translations of English language sentence maybe it can be it is raining or uh, it is not uh, Q stands for grass is wet uh, this stands for if it is uh, grass is wet then implies that it is not raining. So let us consider some examples like this then we will see whether it is satisfiable or not. That means simultaneously it has to be true and all then only we can true especially then, then in that case we can say that these are, these are satisfiable, satisfiable or the other way of saying that thing is consistent. So now what you need to do is again uh, you draw the truth table and then we need to see uh, whether at least under some particular kind of uh, in, in particular kind of row we generate T's. T's. So now you have P Q now this is the formula which we have here and then Q implies not P. Now you need to study this particular kind of thing P or Q and Q implies not P. So under the main logical connective that means end if at least there is one uh, uh, one case one row in which you generate T then that is considered to be satisfiable. If you get all F's here then it is considered to be unsatisfiable. So as usual you have two variables and you can take T T F F and then alternative T alternative F this is the only values that you can take. So now we have not P so you write it for not P also exactly even if P becomes T then it becomes false then it is false and T and T. So the negation of P is takes the values F F T. So now you fill these things uh, P R Q is going to be false only in this case when both are false both constituents are false in all other cases it is T. So now Q implies not P that means you need to take this one Q implies not P the directions are important. So this is going to be false when antecedent is true and the consequent is false and then in this case it becomes T now this is also T now this is also P. Now what we need to consider is these two things. Now uh, only under this particular kind of uh, thing it is false in all other cases it becomes T. the compound formula is going to be T. So now what is that we have achieved with this particular kind of construction of the truth table we are trying to see whether these two statements that we have written on the board are jointly consistent or jointly becomes true. So there are three different cases in which it becomes true true. So these are the three rows which you need to inspect only in this row it becomes false it does not matter but at least in three different situations the formula P or Q and Q or not Q implies not P is simultaneously true that means P or Q and Q implies not P are consistent to each other or if at least one T is there in this one under the major logical connective it is also considered to be satisfiable. So we will talk about formal definition of satisfiability a little bit later but as far as truth table is concerned when you take two formulas P or Q and the combined formula 
under this major logical connective if you come across at least one t then it is considered to be satisfiable. Suppose if you come across all f's and all, all f's etcetera then it is considered to be unsatisfiable. Some examples we can take into consideration uh, we can understand it in a better way. So this formula is considered to be satisfiable or you can even call it as simultaneously you can call it as P or Q is consistent with Q implies not P. So now uh, you take uh, some other formulas and then you can see whether these are consistent to each other or not, not P and not Q. So the way I have written itself shows that these two are contradictory to each other. Of course using truth table again you can find out whether or not these are uh, unsatisfiable, satisfiable etc. So now this is P R Q and not P and not Q. So I will quickly go into the details of this one T T F and F is the one which you write it first and then alternative T's and F's it will be boring if I go into the details of all these things. So now quickly P R Q is false only in this case in all other cases it becomes T now not P is exactly the opposite of this particular kind of column so now this is F F T T now not Q is exactly opposite of this one F T So now this is not the end and all end. So now we need to take the conjunction of uh, this particular kind of thing. So now we need to write not P and not Q as well. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and this is the seventh one. So this is the way we need to write. So now we need to take the conjunction of these two things. So this is going to become true only in this case in all other cases it becomes false because at least in one of the conjuncts is false in these cases. So now this is F F F etc. So now all these cases it becomes uh, this thing. Now you need to consider this and this. Uh, now in all these cases at least one one of the conjunct is false and all so that makes the whole conjunct false only. So now what is that we got is simply this thing under no particular kind of interpretation interpretation means assigning some kind of values or what are we doing assigning values to P and Q. So under, under no particular kind of assignment of the truth values to a given propositional variables we got T's and all T's in particular in the final column of your uh, uh, truth table that means you got all F's. So it is in this sense so these two formulas are inconsistent to each other or it is also considered to be unsatisfiable. So this is the way we can uh, determine whether a given formula is satisfiable and consistency uh, using the truth table method. We can also determine whether two formulas are logically equivalent to each other. So now again we go into the details of this one we take the same example into consideration. So two formulas are said to be logically identical especially when the truth table matches. So now what we need to see here is we need to observe the truth values of this one are they logically equal that is what is the question that we are trying to answer. So what we are saying is when the, the truth table matches exactly then they are considered to be logically equivalent. Uh, so now we need to observe P and Q and this one. So now if you have value F here you got T's and you have F here you have T and you have F you have T here and then whenever you have T you have F here that means the truth table does not match but what else we can say about it when the truth values of 
two particular given formulas are exactly opposite to each other then they are said to be contradictory to each other. So that means here if you have f you will find t here and whenever you find t here you will find f here. So in it is in this sense these two formulas are logically contradictory to each other contradictory to each other because they have exactly opposite truth values now in the truth their truth tables whenever p r q is t now you will see here f whenever you have f here you have t here that means exactly opposite truth values it has these two formulas have exactly opposite truth values and also these two are said to be logically contradictory to each other. So we can also talk about logical equivalence with the help of truth table method that means especially when the truth values of two particular well formed formulas matches then they are considered to be logically equivalent. So now the fourth thing that we can determine with the help of truth table method is the very important thing which is considered to be validity of a given argument. So let us consider some simple examples and we will see whether a particular formula follows from this thing or not. So randomly we take some formula into consideration and then we will see whether particular thing follows from that or not. Let us say you have a formula P implies Q and then you have a formula not P and then this is the conclusion which is separated and all and then you let us say you write not Q. So now using truth table whether or not this particular thing follows or not but initially speaking so we have some kind of rules which is like this if P plus Q is the case P is the case then Q follows. So this is called as modus ponens rule which is obviously truth preserving kind of rule is obviously always valid in the same way there is another kind of rule which we commonly use that is this thing. So here this is antecedent and this is consequent so now this is antecedent and consequent if you deny the antecedent you, need, you have to de, you deny the consequent you need to deny the antecedent as well. So this is called as modus tonens rule. So now we can clearly see here instead of denying the consequent here we denied the antecedent part and then we are denying the consequent. It might work in day to day discourse but in the first in the classical logic or the propositional logic that we are trying to talk about this is considered to be an invalid argument. So we want to see why it is an invalid argument using a particular decision method procedure method which we have been talking about that is truth table. So now what are the variables that exist here P and Q that means four entries are possible because there are two variables here. So you write down the same thing T, T, F and F and alternative T is F etc and the formulas that we have are here this P implies Q and you have not P and so so P implies Q this becomes false only in this case in all other cases it becomes T so this is the semantics of implication that we have and not P is exactly opposite of this one FF and TT. So now you need to write not Q as well. Not Q is this thing F T F T. Now what you need to do here is this thing. So now you can write like this P implies Q and not P, and then separated by that you have not Q. Now so the conjunction of these two is the one which you need to write here that is P implies Q and not P. So that is uh, this becomes false this becomes false and this becomes uh, T and F this becomes false and 
this is T. So, now you need to observe rows in such a way that is there any row in which the left hand side here left hand side is this particular kind of thing P implies Q and not P. Do you have any row in which this whole thing is T and the conclusion is false. So, now you need to inspect the rows what are the rows that you need to inspect these rows these are the two rows which you need to inspect. So, this is the first one so this is on the left hand side left hand side and this is on the right hand side. So, now is there any row in which you have T's on the left hand side and T on the right hand side and F on the left hand side and all. So, now so there are different ways to do this thing. So, now here is an instance where one second P implies Q and not P this is becomes F F and F F T and T T T and T this becomes T. So, this is the one which we need to look into it. So, now so when an argument is considered to be an invalid argument. So, invalid argument is an argument in which you have true premises and a false conclusion that is that is what we have been telling right from the beginning of this course under basic concepts we have clearly said that an argument is invalid especially when it is impossible uh, argument is valid in particular especially when it is impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. So, now these are considered to be premises and this is considered to be a conclusion here in this case is it possible that your premises are true and the conclusion is false. So, now observe this particular kind of row. So, your premises are true that means both taken together are true and your conclusion is false not Q is considered to be the conclusion here. So, that is false that means we can have a counter example in which your premises are true and the conclusion is false that makes this argument invalid. So, that is why this argument is invalid. So, how did we know that this is invalid we constructed a truth table method and then we are inspecting the left hand side and the right hand side and left hand side is usually considered as premises if you have true premises you can only have true conclusion and all. you cannot have false conclusion. If you can come across true premises and a false conclusion then the argument is invalid. So, it is in that sense this particular kind of argument is considered to be an invalid kind of argument. You can consider some other examples and you can show whether a given argument is valid or invalid. Let us consider some more examples and we will see whether with the help of truth table that particular kind of argument is valid or invalid. P implies Q not Q let us say P implies R then from that and you have derived not R. So, now since we have three variables P the truth table will be relatively little bit big. So, now you have P implies Q not Q and P implies R and then you have not R. So, now you need to inspect a row in which suppose if you can come across all these things true and not R is false then it leads to a particular kind of thing that this formula is considered to be invalid. So, it, it involves three variables so the truth table will be relatively bigger. So, instead of that one can try to solve this particular kind of problem using some different kinds of methods which we are will be talking about in the next class. So, now we are trying to see whether not R follows from these two or not. So, simple thing is here P implies Q and not Q from this you will get not P and not P and P implies R. 
So, this is the one which we need to inspect uh, from not P and P implies R whether or not not are follows enough. So, this reduces to two variables now instead of talking about Q, we are talking about this thing not P, P implies R not R. So, if you can say that this is uh, considered to be valid. Uh, if you can say that the premises are true and the conclusion is false then it is invalid otherwise it is going to be valid now. So, now this reduces to this particular kind of thing. So, now quickly we can draw a truth table for this one not P and P implies R not P implies uh, P implies R etcetera and then not R. So, there are three variables here and again uh, the two variables in part in fact. So, P R and not R. So, T T F F this is T F T F then not R is F T F T this is what is not R. P implies R this becomes false only in this case in all other cases it becomes so now not p uh, not p and not p implies r so these are the things uh, which we need to take into consideration not p is this one f f t t not p implies p implies r so now this is false now this is also false t and t true and t and t is going to be true so now not r so now we are trying to see whether not r follows from these things or not so now we have reduced the formula into two variables in all including p and r so now uh, not r is this one so whenever you have t you have f here f you have t and f whenever you have f it is t so now what you need to do here is you need to observe these two rows. Is there any row in which uh, you have true premises and a false conclusion? So now clearly you have uh, this particular kind of row in which your premises are true. That means not P and P implies R are true, and the left right hand side is false enough. So now this row is sufficient enough to show that this particular kind of argument is invalid you do not have to inspect any other row because invalidity requires that at least one counter example. If you can come across with one counter example in which your premises are true and the conclusion is false then obviously the argument is invalid. So what is that we have done here first we have reduced P in plus Q and not Q into this particular kind of thing. So this is a logical consequence of this one from this you can derive not P. not P is a logical consequence of these two by using modus tollens rule. So now we have removed the one particular kind of variable Q is not required here and then we constructed truth table for these things and we have seen that uh, the premises are true and the conclusion is false and hence the argument is obviously an invalid argument. So what we have seen here is this that uh, we can determine whether a given formula is a tautology a contingent statement or contradiction or you can even say when two groups of statements are satisfiable to each other or you can even say when two groups of statements uh, or well formed formulas are logically equivalent to each other they are equivalent to each other especially when the truth values matches and you can also talk about whether or not uh, a given uh, well formed formula or a given conclusion follows from the premises again you can construct the truth table method truth table method works for uh, uh, works better for uh, this thing but uh, when it when the number of uh, variables increases it presents some kind of difficulties so here is the one which we have said so far uh, one can have tautologies especially when under the main logical connect you have only t's and a statement is considered to be contradiction especially under the main logical connect you have only f's and a statement is considered to be contingent if and only if it is true on some assignments that means you assign some kind of values p q 
use as T A and F ultimately under the main logical connective you have two T's two F's or maybe one F one T and three F's etc and all etc at least one T should be there in under the major logical connective it is in that case it is considered to be contingent. So one can determine whether uh, a given formula is a tautology or not uh, using this particular kind of thing. So th there are some particular kind of uh, statements uh, which occur in the natural language and uh, which, which are presented in natural language uh, that is English uh, then we first what we need to do is we need to translate the given English language statement into the appropriate language of propositional logic then we can talk about whether a particular formula is contingent or uh, tautology or uh, it is considered to be uh, contradiction and all. For example if you have this particular kind of thing if the neuron is alive and fires then it has a given minimum number of excite, excitatory fibers A and F implies N and if you want to say if you, the neuron is alive it has given number of excitatory fibers wherever it fires A implies F and N. So now if you want to say that these 1 and 2 are logically equivalent to each other so then what you need to do here is this thing. So the first formula in this one is like this so before that I will talk about uh, what we mean by uh, uh, saying that these two are logically equivalent to each other the first formula is A and F implies N and the second formula is A implies F implies N. So now these are the two formulas which are uh, I mean which we got by translating these two statements in statements. So now if you want to show that uh, this is uh, going to be a tautology then that means if uh, one uh, first statement is considered to be X the second statement is considered to be Y and it, it obviously becomes X if and only if Y. So if you want to say that these two are logically equivalent to each other what you need to do here is this thing. you have a formula X and you have a formula Y. So X and Y are considered to be logically equivalent especially when X even only if Y is a tautology. If you can say that X if and only if Y you can show that X in if and only if Y is a tautology then obviously then X and Y are said to be logically equivalent. So these two statements whether or not logically equivalent to each other for that what we need to check is first you need to translate the English language sentence into appropriately into the language of propositional logic and then let us assume that the first formula is X that is A and F implies N and the second formula is A implies F implies N then X if and only if Y if you can show that that is a tautology then you have already shown that X and Y are said to be logically identical to each other. So in this class what we have discussed is simply this that we started with the truth table method which is considered with the simplistic method which works fine for a number of when the number of variables propositional variables are less. So uh, with the help of truth table method one can talk about consistency one can talk about uh, whether or not a particular formula whether or not a conclusion follows from the premises that is the logical validity or you can also talk about whether or not two given well formed formulas are logically equivalent to each other by showing that X if and only if Y is considered to be a tautology. So in the next class we will be uh, talking about a particular different kind of method uh, which works perfectly all right even if the number of variables are more than 4. So that particular method is called as semantic tablax method. So you have to note that we have been covering semantic methods uh, so far. So then we will move on to uh, this semantic tablox method and we will talk about the essential features of semantic tablox method and we can talk about the same thing like whether or not a given well formed formulas are consistent to each other contingent etc all these things whether a given formula is valid etc all these things we can know with the help of semantic tablox method. In the next class we will we are going to talk about semantic tablox method.